Tara! Hello. How are you doing today? How are you? I ask you first! Uh, I'm good. <laughs> oh, yes, my lovely assistant. We've we've got festiveness. Oh yes, it's 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 that it's the most wonderful time of year. It's it's time for a most the best part of this entire year. Star Wars. Sure. I mean, I'm gonna see that, I guess. Everyone is gonna see it, Tara. Yeah. Well, a couple weekends ago, Dan had me watch the original three. Hmm. Never seen them? I saw them once when they re-released them in the theaters many, many years ago. They're they're okay. Carrie Fisher's makeup was outstanding. <laughs> I can I can tell you that. Um, that's what you, you that's what you latch on to. It was amazing, especially for the late seventies, early eighties. Like it doesn't really look dated at all. They did a really nice job because it doesn't look anachronistic, and that's tough to do. Even though you know it was makeup in space. They probably have makeup in space. However, if you thought that makeup was wonderful. In fact, CoverGirl is putting out a whole makeup line. It's out now, cross-promoting with the movies. They have a whole Star Wars makeup line right now. Well, you know, if you thought that makeup was amazing, have, have you seen the holiday, the, the Star Wars holiday special? No, Dan says he has that somewhere and then I'll have to watch it. Because if you want to talk about some amazing makeup, I'm going to send you a link here so you can see it and I'll show everybody at home. If you want to talk about some amazing makeup. This this here is some is is some truly amazing makeup. Is that a young Donald Trump? <laughs> You'd think so. You'd think so, but that that's that's some amazing make that's a lot of bronzer. That's a lot of everything. By the way, everybody say goodbye to Mike. Why? Very soon Mike will no longer be with us because I'm going to murder him. Why? A terrible thing happened today. A really, really terrible thing happened today. The Why? New York Mets severed their contract with Pepsi and have instead contracted with coca-cola and so city field from now on will be a coca-cola distribute and that's fucking tragic it's horrible okay it's a terrible thing the empire has won okay and mike immediately texted my boyfriend and was like well you can remind her that they have pepsi at yankee stadium <laughs> going to die. <laughs> I'm going to send him that fucking ball from Phantasm for Christmas. <laughs> oh, damn. Uh, although, I got to say, Mike, that was that was sick burn. That was a sick burn. That was... That was... Pepsi and the Mets are iconic. Like, above the outfield, there's a giant sign of the Pepsi Cola script logo. We have what's called the Pepsi Porch. Like these two brands are interconnected and have been for a very long time and I'm very upset. <laughs> and Mike's an asshole. And for this you're going to murder. Yes. You messed with my soda and my team. Sounds legit. Like, all, all he needs for the hat trick is to <sighs> fuck with my cat. No. No, that's Speaking my... Speaking of... That's my the, money. The sweetest, grossest cat. <sighs> I came home and she smelled kind of funny. And I picked her up and her back left paw was just crusted in dried poop. All in between the toes and under the claws. She had no problem with this. No, she didn't give a fuck. <laughs> We cleaned up the foot, but she still smells like poop, so she might need a full-on bath. Oh, I'm sure she's going to love that. Yeah. 
That's that's going to make her whole day. Well, now that we've covered all the basics, shall we get on to the news? Yeah, now we can get on to the news people give a fuck about. Cat poop! That's the news. Cat poop! Each week, Catherine, the radio guy their audience, go out the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here from the set. We like to call, what the fuck is wrong with you? And Tara, we've never made a secret at RDA here that we are an actual news organization. No. This is, this is howling into the void, what we do here. At, at this show, we, we we're we th- th- this is is little better than pointing and laughing. We are not respected journalists. I mean, I wanted to be at one point, but I didn't go that route. Well, um, well, well what, but, what? Even if you were and you came on this show, this is not respected journalism. Th- I mean, that's not no, that's not really, that's not really the crux of what we do here. And yet. We are the journalistic equivalent of that bully kid from The Simpsons. Ha ha! Exactly. That's that's us. And yet, this last week, MSNBC, CNN, and CBS made us look like fucking Walter Cronkite. We've never fucking doxed anybody. Live on the air. Oh, this, this, you may have heard about this because a lot of places were talking about it. Reporters bumble their way through San Bernardino Shooter's apartment. Viewers of cable news on Friday were treated to an incredibly uncomfortable situation. Reporters from MSNBC, CNN, and CBS aired live spots from inside the apartment that belonged to the suspects in the San Bernardino shooting that took place on Wednesday. Um, Vanity Fair was watching uh, NBC's bizarre live stream during which reporter Kerry Sanders picked up a driver's license social security card, and about a dozen photos and more for the inspection of the camera. And held these things up to the camera. Held the driver's license up to the camera. Just in case you wanted to go harass this dude's poor mother who had nothing to do with anything. The reporter, this is even better. The reporter freely admitted he had no idea whom they belonged to or who was pictured in the images they were going through baby toys like they were just it was creepy like i watched footage of it and what was interesting was like anderson cooper was live on cnn at the time and he's thrown to this feet and you could see how visibly uncomfortable anderson cooper was and he's asking their analyst he's like i just I just find this all so very strange. Like I, like he's trying to not undermine his employers, but also to be like, this shit is, this shit ain't right. And the analyst was focusing on, well, it's a crime scene. They shouldn't have opened it up, but it doesn't matter. There are things called, well, hey, we know about this. There are things called ethics and journalists (laughs) and they have nothing to do with who anybody's fucking. But they have a lot to do with making sure there's an actual story before you report it. Not fucking up the lives of innocent people for no reason. Not chasing dragons just because it's sensationalistic. This is fucking Geraldo Rivera in Al Capone's vault brought to the absurdest possible place. Yeah. And and even, even better, earlier this year, The media rose up as one and fell all over themselves with having the vapors when Gawker printed a report that outed um, a prominent figure who had nothing to do with anything. They were just outing this dude because they found out 
Gawker's kind of trashy, and that's what they do. And all of the news sites. And I sites... know you hate Gawker. I still kind of love Gawker. I read Gawker every day, but I understand what they are. It, we had all of these news sites. All of them were just falling all over themselves. They go, oh, my God. Oh, my God. What about your ethics? And then this shit. And that's what's appalling to me is they just... They just walked in report a reporter and a camera and there was no vetting of information. There was no determination of value of information. But there was a thousand dollars paid to the landlord. Yeah. To they let him literally in. were just walking into a place and going through the trash live on television. If somebody doesn't get fired, if heads don't roll, then American journalism, at least in the broadcast sense, is dead. We are, we are better at what we do than MSNBC, Tara. Yeah. I am not proud of this fact. In fact, I am aghast. We at should get this. like an NPR podcast. <laughs> We should. We'll have to say fuck a lot less and we'll have to practice our NPR voice because there's everybody on NPR has the same voice. It's very calm. It's very soothing. It's very pleasant. NPR. Yeah. A thousand yeah. nuns died in a tragic bus crash today in the Gaza Strip. And now. Jazz reviews with Shibapple Shibapple like. They all have really interesting names and the most pleasant voices ever. So we'll have to work on that. But other than that, I think we could we could totally be a quirky NPR podcast because we have journalistic ethics. Uh, isn't, that, isn't that fucked up? I'm a I'm a clown, people. I am a fucking clown. Do you that John Stewart said that same thing for years? He finally had to give it up at one point. Like, he finally had to stop saying that because he was a more valid news source than the news. But for years, he would scream at the camera, I'm a comedian, I am not the news. And finally, he had to stop doing it because he was the only one doing his damn job. Shame on these people. Fucking just... Have you no decency at long last? I don't know what kind of name Shabapal Shabapal is. It's the nonsense words that came into my head when I was trying to think of an interesting name. Sorry. Well, let's move on to what's more considered in our, our wheelhouse. Um, now, by, the, by this headline alone, you might think, well, why are you reporting on this? Oh, kids, you got to get into this one. Text message prompts police response to Danbury store. Hmm. Danbury? Yes. That's my old hood. Get ready to be shamed. A man's... Oh, the Danbury Dollar Tree. A man's unconventional attempt to get his girlfriend's attention prompted a police, report, a police response to a Newtown Road store on Wednesday. Police say a Dollar Tree employee texted his girlfriend about 5.30 p.m. to tell her the store was being robbed. The woman called the Danbury police, immediately sent several officers to the store, but when police arrived, they found employees and customers going about their business and there was no robbery underway. The police said the text was identified as Corey Staggers, 20, of New Haven. He told police he was just trying to get his girlfriend's attention. Few things here for context. <laughs> From a former here Connecticutian. Go. Here we go. First and foremost, the Danbury News Times is a rag piece of shit newspaper with one of the most rancid comment sections on the internet. And I think you all know that's saying something. Second, New Haven is a 45 minute drive from Danbury. And there's probably $16 trees in between. So I'm not sure why you're commuting from New Haven to Danbury to work at a Dollar Tree. That just seems like a waste of gas. Like, it seems like you're losing money on that deal. Third. 
If someone said they were robbing the Dollar Tree on Newtown Road, honestly, I'd kind of believe it. <laughs> the Newtown Road area of Danbury is downwind from a giant landfill at the top of a small mountain type thing. That whole area of town reeks of sewage. What one All might call town. what one might call a scenic locale, if you will. And they've built condos all around that mountain, which all sold to out of towners because all the locals knew that whole end of town reeks of sewage all the time. Hmm. It smells terrible. No one wants to live there, and so it's all businesses down there. But people get a little crazy because it reeks. So just a, just a few things for context for you. And and finally, of course. Why am I scary as shit sometimes? And, and, and the last point here, of course, is fuck you jail. Yeah. Also, that's not a way to get your girlfriend's attention. Just send her a dick pic like everybody else. <laughs> Said no. No. Tara, not helping. Not helping. No. No. Or do what I do when Dan isn't answering my text. I send him a picture of a cat. And then he's like, oh, cat. And I'm like, there you are. Hi. Like, you know, figure out what worked. That's just send a dick pic like everybody else. No. It's not helping. Friend. It's not like don't send dick pics to strangers because that's sexual harassment. Don't do that. That's rude. If it's your girlfriend, she's seen it. If your girlfriend is not responding to your text, the correct response here is to first call. See, these devices that we have, these wonderful machines, they're called smart phones. phones. They have this amazing feature that allows you, by pressing this series of numbers, you can contact another human being who possesses one of these devices with the power of your voice. <laughs> How sci-fi is that shit? It's kind of like a Star Trek communicator, but yeah. you don't wear it on your shirt. Yeah. Second, if, the, if she's not answering the phone, if she ain't answering your text, you know, if you're genuinely worried about their welfare, they're not answering the phone or text, like, uh-oh, something's wrong. Call someone who knows them, lives nearby. Maybe you call the police, possibly, if you have a serious concern. But if they just ain't responding to you, there's a reason. And I feel like normally what you would consider the buck-ass crazy reaction to that is assuming your girlfriend's cheating on you and flipping a bitch over that. This guy went like above and beyond and was like, no, I'm going to fake my own Robert. hostage situation. I mean, what? Don't do that shit. Yeah, I mean, this, you... is, this is the grown up version of the kid who used to pee himself in school just to get sent to the office. Because any kind of attention is good attention. You didn't have one of those kids? I did not have one of those kids. I where, wasn't that kid. Where is that? What, what? This is a thing? You know, the kid that, and like, any attention is good attention. So they do, they do bad shit to get in trouble because that's still attention. It's, <laughs> I never, who is, who was this kid? I'm, I'm, I'm curious not, now. Names. I'm wrapped. You have I'm, my attention. We don't dox people on the air, Nash. We have ethics. <laughs> but shabapple, shabapple. <laughs> the mystery of the pants sweater shall remain. Oh, uh, we've got another one of our reruns tonight. Right. However, there was there's one line in this story that gave me pause. When we get there, you'll see what I mean. But yeah, it's another one of these. York City man stole ambulance, took joyride. Call for a breathing problem. Early Friday morning in York City was a pretty standard one for the EMT. 
until they brought their patient outside and realized their ambulance was gone. Someone had stolen it when no one was looking, or at least no one besides the in-vehicle camera and the vehicle tracking device. Because they have those, because those vehicles are important. The latter led to a quick recovery of the ambulance, and the former showed a cheerful young man, apparently. Look at the, he is. Look at the mugshot. He's like, well. What do you do? But that is, and, and sadly, this is becoming rather commonplace. Yeah. But here's the line in the story. I swear to you, I am not making this up. Tara will verify this. This is a line in the story. I read this and I, the, the, the color drained from my face. This is one of the uh, authorities talking about the, the, the whole incident. Um, everything ended fine. Patient got the hospital, much delay. Um, the, the official Arvin was allowed to laugh about it a little bit Saturday afternoon, mostly at how bad of an idea is to steal an emergency vehicle. Quote, it should make that stupid video show, unquote. He watches us? I think he probably means another stupid video show, but I'm going to pretend he watches us. And the color just, I... I I I went pale when I read that. I was like, oh no. They know. We used to joke that people would do shit to get on this show. When you stare into the abyss, the abyss stares back. We used I've I've We have spent many a year staring into the inky grossness of humanity. And now it's staring back. And now, reaching out its tentacly fingers at us. Now, he doesn't specify which show. But it could be us, because we do kind of fall into that. We do technically fall into that category. So if you meant us, Sir Official, hello. Thank you for watching. Nonetheless, it Glad was one you got of, your ambulance back. It was one of those moments where I just went, what have I done? What the fuck have I done? I don't understand why people steal ambulances. I really don't like you could be the asshole that cost someone their life because you wanted to go for a joyride. Mm -hmm. Literally, somebody could die because you also, want to play GTA IRL. Also, what are you doing? Picking up chicks in an ambulance? That's not sexy. I mean, they do usually have a bed-like device in the back, but it's on wheels. Not safe. Hey, baby, you want to ride my death car? Because I bet, like... 200 people died in this thing. They're full of drugs. And electroshock panels. I mean, you could have a kinky old time in an ambulance. But don't. Have you, I, we should, who has put that much thought into this? Me, apparently. <laughs> but don't get your own drugs and electroshock <laughs> devices and do that at home don't steal an ambulance because we need those to save people's lives yes dude, dude be freaky with your own shit there's a whole website for kinky fetish medical devices there's a whole website that because specializes in selling is. those items because they have an electronic is. they have an electric electrocuting speculum you hook up to a car battery that's the thing you can buy on the internet just buy that Okay, okay, Tara. I know what a speculum is. Yeah. There are some people with penises watching right now who do not know what a speculum is. Do you want me to tell them? No, I don't, because... But Dan, shut up! A speculum, when you go to the gynecologist, is a... God damn it! Thing, and they... they, they, they put put it in your hoo-ha and then they crank it and, it and it pulls you open so they can get a nice good look 
at all the business inside. Well, they make those for a sexual purpose that you can have electrocute your open hoo-ha and you can hook them up to a car battery to get maximum voltage. If you're interested in that sort of thing, it's available on the internet. And I honestly don't even remember why I know that. I just know things. Terrible things. Terrible things. Moving right along, we have some more GTA shenanigans. I shouldn't even use that word. Shenanigans are fun and, and you know, entail a good time had by all. No one had a good time. No one had a good time here. Okay, here, I, I guess the best way to intro this one is the phrase, thereby... You're so mad at me right now. <laughs> the, the best way to intro this story is the phrase, thereby hangs a tale. Alleged purse snatcher steals Jimmy John's delivery car, jumps into Elizabeth River naked. See, that's a car that it's okay to steal because all you're denying people is subpar sandwiches. North, They're probably better off. Norfolk, Virginia, a man has been taken into custody after police say, follow me on this one, this is a joyride. He reportedly tried to steal someone's purse in an emergency room, took off in a... Not okay. No, took off in a stolen Jimmy John's delivery, delivery vehicle and jumped into the Elizabeth River. What was the Jimmy John's delivery vehicle doing at the emergency room? Well... Delivering food to the hospital staff, I guess? I, they gotta eat! Yeah. Please say this all started when someone noticed the man trying to steal a purse at Norfolk uh, Centara General Hospital. Folks were, no officials were notified in the incident and uh, one of the, them confronted the suspect. The man ran outside took the unattended Jimmy John's delivery vehicle and took off. Fort Norfolk, uh, Norfolk security personnel contacted police, told them the vehicle entered the gate and crashed into a building. They say the driver got out of the car, stripped naked, and then jumped into the water. Like you do. When he finally returned to shore, police were waiting. <laughs> Did they just stand there like, hey? Come back so we can arrest you. It's not like they go away. <laughs> it's not. I mean, this is a GTA. All right, Tara, this is literally a GTA thing. Maybe he was hoping he would turn into sea foam like the Little Mermaid. No. Like the real ending of the Little Mermaid, where she casts herself into the ocean and is magically transformed into sea foam. This is an actual GTA thing, okay? If you go far enough away. Oh, really? And the police can't see you. They go away. Like they don't chase you after a mile? Yeah, and, and then you stop being wanted. That's not how it really works! No, that's not real life. They keep coming. And stealing shit from people in the hospital is especially fucked up. Yeah! because my, my mom got her cell phone stolen while she was having inpatient chemo. That's... And that's some bullshit to do to somebody because in many cases that's their main contact with the outside world, that that wallet or purse has their insurance information, their identifying information, and they are already compromised in some way because they're in the fucking hospital. That's a bullshit thing to do to somebody and you're an asshole for doing it. And again, why naked? Why did he have to jump in the river naked? I mean, I guess he probably didn't want to get his clothes wet. When he jumped in the river. He's like, oh, oh no, I've got to escape. But first, this is cashmere. Exactly. Fucking sick. <laughs> I just... Good. Kids, don't do drugs. <laughs> no. Fuck's sake. All right. Um, speaking of don't do drugs, and we're back to the hospital again. God damn it. Oh, good. Oh, okay. 
We've quite often on this show covered incidences where people have hidden things they shouldn't inside themselves. Too often. And we've always said that's a bad idea because it could end badly because that shouldn't be in there. And that's not sanitary. Oh, oh boy. CT scan leads to drug bust in Springfield. Surgery required. Oh, dear. Springfield police, they say they found more than $1,200 of cash and three different types of drugs on or in a man who was hospitalized following a motorcycle crash. John E. Julian, 48, was charged th uh, Tuesday with three counts of drug distribution after police say surgery was required to recover some of the narcotics he was carrying. According to a probable cause statement, police were dispatched to a emergency hospital trauma room just before midnight after the hospital staff found, quote, a large amount of narcotics on Julian. The statement says the uh, Julian had been transported to Mercy Hospital in a helicopter after he was involved in a motorcycle crash. After the staff, as the staff was undressing Julian to address his wounds, they located some plastic bags with drugs and what looked like a drug ledger. Staff also found uh, 1200 in cash, in addition to a check for 180 Who writes the drug dealer a check? Honestly. As the officer was getting ready to leave with the drugs in cash, the hospital staff informed him a CT scan had revealed more drugs hidden in Julian's rectum. Holy moly. Read what drugs. 28 grams of meth, 8.5 grams of marijuana, and at least five generic Xanax pills. I really hope it's not the meth you crammed up your ass. Oh! One, because it sounds the most painful. Two, because if that bag breaks, I feel like it's the most dangerous to have up your ass. Also, don't put drugs up your ass. And then ride a <laughs> motorcycle. Are you kidding me? Do you remember how... Don't put drugs up your ass and then straddle anything. <laughs> do you remember when it used to be the old running joke was your mom would say don't go out without clean underwear because if you get in an accident you want them to see you're wearing clean underwear yeah even though my mom's thing was every time we went on a trip we had to buy brand new pajamas because what if the hotel catches fire and you have to run outside? You have to have nice brand new pajamas. Okay, I think we now have a 21st century version of this, which is... Don't put drugs up your ass in case you're in an accident! Don't put drugs up your ass at all. At all. Don't worry about if you're going to have an accident. Don't put drugs up your ass. <laughs> Don't put guns up your vagina. Don't use your orifices for storage at all. Uh... And then certainly don't straddle things, for God's sake. <laughs> Keep saying straddle is such one of the, it's a whole, that is a comedy word. That is just a funny word. Stop saying straddle. <laughs> Every time you say straddle, I laugh. I don't know why. Straddle. All right. Finally this week, we have some good old-fashioned douchebaggery with one hell of a price tag on it. Irate Cortland County man rams 14 vehicles after leaving family court. Wow. David Southwick, Southwick began slamming his flatbed truck, because of course it was, into parked vehicles around 9.30 a.m. after leaving the courthouse. Cortland Voice reported that Southwick was driving a white flatbed truck when officers found him ramming into other vehicles. He ran into 14 cars and did a lot of damage. Understatement of the years coming up here. 
Cortland Police Lieutenant Richard Troyer, quote, he was a tad bit upset. He was he was a little miffed. That's like a British. Like, is this guy British? Because that's British people are like, well, he blew up a city block. He was a little upset. He was a tad upset. He 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 was a mite perturbed. He he was a bit put out. Probation's officer's SUV was among the vehicles totaled in the rampage. Southwick was arrested in the parking lot. Do you know why? Because you're at a courthouse. Yeah. There's cops all the fuck over. Yeah. You ain't going home. And by the time you hit 14 cars, your car is probably not going that fast anymore. No, no. No, you're not going that fast anymore. Yeah. And yeah, you're at the courthouse. It's made of law enforcement people. They're everywhere. I mean, Fuck, idiot. And and look at this guy. I just that this is this is oh that's a wonderful mugshot, isn't it? He looks like he's got some anger issues. He looks a tad bit upset. Look, whatever happened in court, you're not going to fix it with a felony. <laughs> This is what we call compounding the error. <laughs> yes. You have made everything worse <laughs> for yourself. And for 14 other people. Yeah. Who suddenly they're insured somewhere at, at like a good neighbor fucking State Farm. <laughs> the, 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 some, they're out there in the fucking part lot chanting that shit. Just locked arms going... <laughs> Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Like a good neighbor, People State Farm. Red polos just manifest <laughs> all over the fucking parking lot. They don't even know why. Because <laughs> it's like a summoning ritual. <laughs> it's gonna cost this dude a lot of money. Fourteen insurance claims. You're never driving a car again. No. You're never, no one is insuring you. Get yourself a fucking skateboard. <laughs> can you imagine, oh, Terry, can you imagine this guy on a skateboard, really? No. That's, that is, that. He's going to be angry bus guy now. Yeah, he's, he, that's angry bus guy. You're angry bus guy now. I mean, gee. Yes, the, 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 the first thing we learned tonight is when you're in a hole, stop digging. Yeah. Or in this case, stop smashing into cars. And don't put any drugs in that hole either. Yes. Don't put drugs in your holes. They're not for, that's not why you got those holes. No. Every hole you have has a specific purpose. Yes. That was not what Storage that... is almost none of them. None of them. You didn't get, you are not a marsupial. <laughs> Wouldn't that be kind of fun though? No, Tara, can you Im imagine how far this show would plummet were we marsupials? True. It'd be, it'd be a weekly, what can I put in my fucking pouch? No. <laughs> We've learned, don't, you know what? Don't steal from people at the fucking hospital and for and, and the police. Your wanted star rating does not decay. It's not going to go down. Doesn't happen in the real world. Sorry to break it to you. Don't steal from people in the hospital. Don't steal emergency equipment that is needed to save people's lives because. Yeah. There's no thing. As, there's no such thing as a victimless crime, but those crimes are extra special. Like. You could kill somebody. Yeah, and we, we, we've learned that no one is getting laid from an ambulance. And that you can buy most of the stuff in there online with enhancements. We didn't need that. But we did learn it. Be fair. We've learned that when you encounter she's just not that into you, the appropriate response is not to fake a hostage situation. No. 
because that's not going to make her go, oh, I was wrong. You know what? You're right. That's misuse. Not... Misuse of nine one one is so hot. Actually, she called nine one one. So well, no, he. Yeah, but he texted her that they were being robbed, and then she called nine one one because she's probably a half decent human being and yeah. was worried about her boyfriend. That's not. That's not gonna. No. This that will not. That that she will not want to watch to touch your pee pee again. That's that's not how it's gonna. And finally, we've learned after this last week, we have become one of the last bastions of ethical journalism. And that scares the shit out of me. Maybe we could get Anderson Cooper to do the show with us. You know what? Somebody call him. I, I'm game. <laughs> I, I'd be like, hey, Anderson, welcome. That would be like the best day of my life. I love Anderson Cooper. Welcome to the show. I can promise you we're not going to go rummage through a dead person's apartment. I'd be like, look, Kathy Griffin, she's right. I'm way funnier. I need to be your new token redhead. You need to give me that job. Kathy Griffin is so five years ago.